the addition of the Asset Browser to Blender 3.0 is a very welcome change. In 3.1 it's working very well for materials and worlds, so assets with a single data block. This box bot consists of almost 100 objects however, and so you can't easily store and use it as an asset, due to the single data block limitation. Only single objects can be marked as assets. Collections cannot be marked as assets as of 3.1. That's a change that will come in 3.2. Machine Tools 1.0 then, introduces the Asset Browser tools, that allow you to create and use an asset made up of multiple objects like this, what I call assembly assets. It's achieved by automatically creating a collection for the asset, and then referencing it using a collection instance, which of course is a single object. And by the way, 3.2 seems to solve this in the same way. Importing collections marked as assets will also bring them in as collection instances. I mention this because it means the two tools provided here will remain just as useful in 3.2 as they are now. This bot comes with some drivers that control the movement of some objects and even some material parameters. What's great is that these drivers will keep working as expected after importing this robot from the asset browser. So you can set up some really interesting and dynamic assets this way. To start using the following tools, you need to first enable them in the add-on preferences. Doing so will expose some related settings. The Asset Creation tool allows you to assign your asset to any of the existing catalogs in your library. Here you can then define which catalog should be used as the default. Also, if you define a workspace with an asset browser here, the Asset Creation tool will switch to it automatically, saving you a click. The rest should be self-explanatory. The Asset Browser tools can be accessed from the sidebar. If you use the Save Pi and the Modes Pi, you can by default access them from there as well, which is a bit more convenient. So, if you want to create an asset from an assembly of multiple objects, make your selection, then run the Create Assembly Asset tool. You'll then have a few options, such as the name of the asset and the catalog it should be added to. And as mentioned, I have set Model as the default catalog in the add-on preferences, and so it's automatically chosen here already. If you are a decal machine or mesh machine user, you will have the option to remove decal backups and mesh machine stashes here. If an asset is truly finished, then you won't need these anymore, and removing them will make the asset a bit more lightweight, so to speak. The following three just determine how the asset appears in the scene, after the tool is run. But in all of the three cases, the asset will be accessible from the asset browser. Finally, there's the option to do a quick viewport render for the thumbnail. Note that the thumbnail will not be assigned to the asset automatically. I don't think that's possible via the API yet. Instead the thumbnail will be saved in the user's home directory. With the tool finished, the workspace was switched to my chosen asset browser workspace. The asset will appear under the unassigned catalog, but don't worry about that. Once you save the blend file to your library, the asset will appear in the correct catalog whichever you have chosen. As for the thumbnail, you'll have to manually assign it, as indicated before. Fetch it from the home directory. You can then just save the blend file to your library location and you may want to use the save as asset option in the save pie. This will remove everything from the current blend file that doesn't belong to an asset in the file, thereby ensuring the saved asset blend file only contains what is required. Be careful with this however. If there's anything in the blend file not belonging to an asset that you want to keep around, you should undo after saving, or just simply not save the current blend file in its current location, after you've saved the asset. I'm now returning to my startup file. And as you can see, in the model catalog, the saved asset has indeed appeared. I can just drag it into the scene now, as you'd expect. It will appear as a collection instance, so a single object referencing a collection in the blend file, which is not linked to the scene. And you can bring in multiple of course. For static assets this is all you need. But if you want to access the individual objects, such as the arrow here, you need to use the second asset browser tool. It's called, Assemble Collection Instance, and it's most conveniently accessed from the modes Pi.
and there you go. You can run it while holding the Alt key, which will keep the collection instances empty as the root object, but since this asset is already using groups and has a root empty already, there is no need for this in my case. Everything works as you would expect, even the drivers. You can run the tool with multiple assets selected too. If you are wondering why the materials are all driven by the first robot's arrow, it's because when I dragged in the assets, I had it set to reuse data. This will deduplicate the materials, which means all three robots now use the exact same materials. And so only one arrow drives them. I could have avoided this by not reusing data. And each arrow would then only drive the unique materials belonging to its own robot.